Hi, I'm Mark Davies. Welcome to this video which provides an overview of EnglishCorporate.org. Here's an outline of where we'll be going in this video. We'll first provide a very quick overview of who uses the corpora. And then in section one, we'll discuss why you might want to use a corpus in the first place, especially if you're a non-native speaker. Before we talk about how to search the corpus itself, in section two, we'll discuss how you can get a wide range of information on a given word with just one easy search. And then in section three, we'll discuss how you can search through carefully edited lists of the top 60,000 words in the corpus. In sections four through nine, we'll provide an overview of basic searches of the corpus itself. In sections 10 through 19, we'll give lots and lots of great examples of how the corpora can be used to examine variation in English. Finally, in sections 20 to 24, we'll discuss some of the tools that will help you as you use the corpora. Note that there's a lot of information in this video, and most pages give a lot of concrete examples of searches in the corpora. If things are going too fast, you might want to pause the video to understand better what's going on. First, we note that the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org are the most widely used corpora in the world, more than 85,000 distinct users each month. This is much more than any other corpus website. The corpora are used by people for many purposes, but especially for teaching and research. There's also a great deal of data from the corpora that can be downloaded for offline use, and this data has been used by thousands of universities and companies. Finally, basic access is free, and licenses provide expanded access to the corpora. So why would you want to use a corpus in the first place? Why not just use a textbook or an online dictionary or lots of Google searches? To answer this, let's take a quick look at the corpus data for one simple word, the word seldom. As the corpus data shows, seldom is used much more in formal genres like academic. The use of seldom has decreased a lot over time and seldom is used much less in the U.S. than in the U.K. In other words, to an American at least, seldom sounds formal, old-fashioned, and British. This is the type of information that can be invaluable for non-native speakers and writers of English who may have limited intuitions about English. You can either spend years and years trying to develop this intuition or you can do some quick and easy corpus searches to provide the same information. And how would you get this information from Google searches or from an online dictionary? And other online corpora wouldn't give you this information either, especially if they were just based on a huge multi-billion word blob of data from web pages where the texts don't give information on genres or dialects or whether individual words sound old-fashioned or not. This is a simple example of variation with just one word, but variation is also important for syntax or grammar and meaning. In summary, no other resource provides you with the insight into English that you can get at EnglishCorpora.org. In just a minute, we'll talk about searching the corpus itself. But before that, we'll briefly mention how you can get an incredible range of information about individual words with one simple search. And what you see here is something that no other corpus website provides. Suppose you want to find information on the meaning and usage of the word climate. You just input the word and click word. You then see the frequency information, including detailed information on word forms, how many texts the word appears in, and more. The frequency by genre, which would never be possible with a web-only corpus, simple definitions with links to external definitions and even etymology, links to images, pronunciation, and videos, translation to more than 100 languages, 
synonyms and more specific and more general words, collocates, which are nearby words and which provide insight into meaning and usage, topics, which are words that occur anywhere in the text and which often provide even better insight into meaning than collocates, morphologically related words, the most frequent two, three, and four word clusters with this word, sample concordance lines to see the pattern in which the word occurs. This page is just an overview. You can click on almost any word or link on this page to see much more detailed information for concordances, clusters, and so on. Again, the corpora provide a much, much wider information or range of information on a word than any other corpus site. In addition to finding all of this detailed information on a specific word, you can also browse and search through carefully corrected and edited lists of the top 60,000 words in the corpus, which is something that is only possible at EnglishCorpora.org. At the most basic level, you can browse through word lists by frequency. For example, you can see words at high frequency, medium frequency, and low frequency levels. For any word in the word list, you can click to see the very detailed word sketch that we discussed previously. You can also search by word form, such as words that have the string break, B-R-E-A-K, in the word. For each matching word, you see the rank order, 1 to 60,000, the frequency, and the part of speech. You can also click on links to find external resources that show the pronunciation, have the word in videos, images, and even find translations to more than 100 different languages. You can also search by pronunciation and the number of syllables in the word. For example, you could search for one-syllable words that rhyme with leave. This can be very useful for a language like English, where spelling is fairly unpredictable. You can even search by word meaning. For example, you can search by definition, such as words that have both computer and device in the definition. You can also search by synonym and search the list to find more specific and more general words, such as more specific words for the verb laugh. And again, the results are sorted by frequency in the corpus. Finally, you can combine these searches to perform very powerful queries. For example, you can search for verbs whose definition includes the word walk and which start with S and which have two syllables. You would then see words like stumble, saunter, and sachet. No other corpus allows anything like this. Up to this point, we have searched for information on one specific word, or we have searched through carefully edited word lists. From this point on in the video, we'll discuss how you can search the corpus itself and not just word lists. For example, you can search for words starting with RE and ending in BLE. You see a list of the matching words, and then you can click on any word or phrase to see it in context. And then you can see even more context, up to about 200 words of context. In addition to seeing the basic frequency list, such as this list with break in the word, you can also click on sections to see the frequency of each word in each section of the corpus, such as the genres in COCA, the Corpus of Contemporary American English, or the decades, such as in COA, the Corpus of Historical American English. Every word in the corpus is tagged for part of speech, which allows you to carry out sophisticated searches on the corpus. For example, 
you can search for soft noun or end up verbing. And even something as complicated as the like construction. And we were like, but I was like. And at EnglishCorpora.org, these searches are much, much faster and have much simpler search syntax than anywhere else. In terms of word usage and meaning, you can see the collocates, nearby words, grouped by part of speech, such as the collocates of dinosaur, as you see here. These collocates provide you with good information about the meaning and usage of the word. Most corpusites only provide collocates, which again are nearby words, and in this case it's four words to the left to four words to the right. But our corpora show you words that co-occur anywhere in the text, even sentences or paragraphs away. These words, which we will call topics, often provide a better insight into word meaning and usage than collocates. And these topics are only available at EnglishCorpora.org. Collocates can also provide insight into semantic prosody, which is whether a word carries an overall positive or negative sense. For example, most of the collocates of cause are negative. You can also compare the collocates of two different words to tease apart the difference between these words. For example, utter and complete are quite similar in meaning, but the collocates of utter, such as desolation, contempt, and stupidity, are quite negative. The corpora also allow you to search by synonym, which is something that is not possible with any other corpus site. For example, suppose you're a learner of English and you want to know which synonyms of potent or powerful are the most common with the word argument. With one simple search, you can see that although potent argument does exist, synonyms like strong, convincing, or persuasive are much more common. Searches like this are very helpful for non-native speakers to help them know which words would sound best in a particular context. You can also create and edit your own customized word lists, such as words referring to parts of the body or colors or professions or any other list. You can then insert this list right into the search itself, such as break ones and then part of the body. Again, no other corpus website allows you to do searches like this. Finally, concordance or keyword in context lines allow you to see the patterns in which a word occurs. For example, the verb fathom, which means to understand, is nearly always preceded by a negative word, such as can't, or consider the phrase naked eye. This phrase is nearly always preceded either by visible to or invisible to, or else to see something with the naked eye. The main point here is that words do not occur in isolation. They occur as part of patterns involving other words, which is something that a dictionary often doesn't show. As was mentioned previously, the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org allow you to quickly and easily examine variation, either between genres, over time, or between dialects. The data from these searches can be incredibly powerful for non-native speakers to allow them to examine, as with seldom earlier in the video, whether a word or phrase or syntactic construction might sound formal or informal, old-fashioned or really new, or whether it might sound, for example, like British or American English. In this first section, we will look at genre-based variation. Most of the data for this section comes from the corpus of contemporary American English, COCA, which contains more than 1 billion words of data from 1990 to 2019. Most importantly, 
it contains between 125 and 130 million words of data from each of the following genres, blogs, other web texts, TV and movie subtitles, spoken, fiction, magazines, newspapers, and academic. In other words, it contains a great range of texts from informal to formal, and it's the only large and recent corpus of English that has this range of genres. The British National Corpus, or BNC, is much smaller and older than COCA, but it also provides useful data. And other corpora that provide information on genre-based variation include the Strathy Corpus from Canada and the Corpus of Online Registers of English. In terms of lexical variation across genres, suppose, for example, that a non-native speaker uses the phrase, a lot of noun. She might not realize that a lot of is much more frequent in informal genres like spoken, but that it wouldn't really be appropriate for formal academic English. The phrase several noun, on the other hand, is used much more frequently in academic. So if she wants the paper to sound more formal, she should probably use several noun instead of a lot of noun. In addition to seeing the frequency of a specific word or phrase across genres, we can also quickly and easily do searches to find all words that are more common in one genre or subgenre than another. For example, this simple search allows us to find adjectives that are more common in medical texts than in general academic texts. We can also compare the frequency of syntactic constructions across genres. For example, consider the like construction, such as, and I was like, and they're like. A simple search shows that this is much more frequent in informal genres like TV or movies or spoken than in formal genres like academic. Or consider the be passive, such as are made, were found. Many prescriptive grammars say that we should avoid the passive, but the corpus data shows that the be passive actually occurs more, much more, in careful formal genres like academic. Finally, we can quickly and easily compare meaning across genres by looking at collocates. For example, we can compare nouns near chain in fiction and academic. The corpus data shows that in fiction, on the left of the chart, the meaning is used usually literal, a physical chain, as seen by collocates like neck, gold, or fingers. In more formal academic English, on the other hand, chain has a more abstract, metaphorical sense, as seen by collocates like commodity, analysis, or supply. Turning to historical variation, EnglishCorpora.org provides the best corpora for looking at changes in English over time. Perhaps the best corpus for looking at historical change is COA, the Corpus of Historical American English. COA is comprised of 475 million words from 1820 to 2019, and it has roughly the same genre balance from decade to decade. COA provides many searches that Google Books never could. And because COA is 100 times as big as any other structured historical corpus of English, it allows us to carry out many searches that would never be possible in these much smaller corpora. In addition to COA, there are several other corpora at EnglishCorpora.org that allow you to look at changes in English. In summary, no other corpus site provides the range of historical corpora as EnglishCorpora.org. Looking first at lexical change, we can find the frequency of any word or phrase during the last 200 years. 
For example, we could search for reds, a derogatory term for communists, and we would see that the frequency is the highest in the 1950s. And it is the highest in any year in the year 1953, which is the year of the anti-communist McCarthy hearings in the United States Senate. You can also search for phrases such as a most adjective noun, such as a most unusual thing. And you would see that the frequency has gone down almost each decade during the last 150 years. In addition to looking for specific words or phrases, you can also quickly and easily find all words that are more frequent in one historical period than another. For example, this search compares words ending in ism that are more frequent in the 1800s, such as Romanism or heathenism, or during the last five decades or so, such as racism or anti-Semitism. We can also look at much more recent lexical shifts using either COCA or especially the now corpus, newspapers on the web. As of February 2023, the now corpus contains 16.8 billion words in more than 28 million texts from 2010 to the present time. Most importantly, it grows by about 5 to 7 million words each day, or about 180 to 200 million words each month. The now corpus allows you to search for a given word or phrase and see the frequency by year, month, and day. For example, many people have been interested in the use of the phrase fake news. The corpus shows that it first appears with any appreciable use in 2016, and more specifically in November 2016, and even more specifically starting on about November 10th, 2016, which is two days after Trump won the election. No other corpus allows research that is this precise and is based on such a large corpus as the now corpus. The historical corpora from EnglishCorpora.org provide researchers with data that allows them to map out syntactic changes in English with much more precision than with any other corpora. For example, you can search for end up verbing like ended up getting and COA shows that the construction didn't really exist before the 1920s, but that it has increased in frequency each decade since then. This is supplemented by data from COCA, which shows that the construction has increased in each five-year period since the early 1990s, and that it is now almost twice as frequent as it was 30 years ago. Or consider the like construction, such as, and I was like. COA shows that it has increased in each decade since the 1980s, and COCA shows that it has increased in each five-year period since the early 1990s, and that it is now about 20 times as frequent as it was 30 years ago. Finally, because COA is so large, about 100 times as large as any other structured historical corpus of English, at least for the last 200 years, we can use collocates to look at semantic change. For example, let's look at the collocates of gay. COA shows, that the coll COA shows the collocates decade by decade during the last 200 years. We see that in the 1800s and the first half of the 1900s, gay meant happy or cheerful. In the 1950s to 1960s, and also into the early 1970s, gay was undergoing semantic change to the current meaning, and the word was overall much less common than before or after that time. Since the late 1970s, the collocates refer to the new meaning of sexual orientation, with collocates like lesbian, rights, and marriage. This type of approach, which looks at collocates to examine semantic change, only works with large corpora like COA, and it would never be possible 
with tiny four to five million word corpora. In this and many other ways, COA has transformed English historical linguistics since the corpus was first released in 2010. There are several corpora at EnglishCorpora.org that allow you to carry out careful studies of variation in the English of countries like the UK, the US, Australia, India, or Singapore. Probably the best corpus is the GLOBE corpus, Global Web-Based English. Since its release in 2013, GLOBE has revolutionized the study of English dialects in the same way that COA has done this for studies of historical English. GLOBE contains nearly 1.9 billion words of data from 20 different countries. The texts come from general web pages from each of these countries, as well as from blogs, which are typically very colloquial. GLOBE is about 100 times as large as the International Corpus of English, ICE, and GLOBE provides many, many searches that ICE, because of its small size, never could. And, and in addition to GLOBE, there are several other corpora at EnglishCorpora.org that allow you to carry out studies on varieties in English. At the most basic level, using GLOBE, you can see the frequency of any word or phrase in each of the 20 different countries. For example, banjaxed, which means screwed up or messed up, is limited primarily to Ireland. Eve teasing, on the other hand, occurs primarily in South Asia, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. You can also find all words that occur more in one country than another. You can do this in Globe or Now or in the TV or Movies corpora. For example, this search from the 325 million word TV corpus finds adjectives occurring after the word so that are more common in the US or the UK. In the UK, for example, we find adjectives like daft and chuffed, which would almost never be used in the United States. We can also use the corpora to examine syntactic variation between the different countries. For example, we can look at the like construction, such as and I'm like. We see that it is most common in the US and that its frequency decreases in almost stair-step fashion in Canada, the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. This example looks at a very narrow syntactic construction. With the verb stop, nearly all dialects can use from in the construction, as in stopped him from leaving. But the construction without from, such as stopped him leaving, is much, much more frequent in Great Britain, the UK, than in American or Canadian English. Finally, we can use collocates to compare the meaning of words in different varieties of English. For example, let's look at adjectival collocates occurring with scheme in the US and the UK. The collocates in Great Britain on the right are fairly neutral, since in Great Britain, scheme is similar in meaning to plan. But in the US, on the left, scheme has a much more negative sense, as is shown by collocates like evil, fraudulent, and nefarious. A second example doesn't deal with the meaning of a given word, per se, but rather what is being said about a particular topic. Some people call this critical discourse analysis. For example, let's compare adjectives that occur before wife in Asia and Africa compared to what are called the inner circle dialects, such as the US, UK, and Australia. There are several collocates in Africa and Asia, shown on the left, which would sound quite awkward in countries like the US or the UK, such as temporary, senior, or permanent wife, or chaste, or obedient, 
wife. So in this case, the collocates refer to different societal or cultural norms in these countries. Using collocates in this way only works in large corpora like GLOBE, and research like this would never be possible in corpora like the International Corpus of English, ICE, which is only one one hundredth the size of GLOBE. In addition to searching the corpora, there are many features at EnglishCorpora.org which make the corpora even more useful for teaching, learning, and research. We will mention these very briefly in this video, and there will soon be individual videos on each of these features. First, at EnglishCorpora.org, it is much easier and much quicker to create virtual corpora, or subsets, of the entire corpus than can be done at any other corpus website. The first way to create a virtual corpus is to find text with a given word or phrase, such as nuclear energy. In less than three or four seconds, the corpus finds the best text, and you can select as many of these as you want. You can also organize your virtual corpora in powerful ways, but this is something that we won't discuss here. In just two or three seconds more, you can extract the keywords from your virtual corpus and you can easily adjust how specific these keywords are. And of course, you can also limit any search, keyword and context, concordance, collocates, strings, and so on, to your virtual corpus. A second way to create virtual corpora is by using metadata, information about the text, such as date, author, title, source, and so on. For example, in the now corpus, we can create a virtual corpus composed of text from the Guardian newspaper in Great Britain, which have the word Ukraine in the title of the article, and which appeared during the first month of the Russian invasion, February 24th to March 24th, 2022. In just one to two seconds, the corpus searches through the 28 million texts in the now corpus to produce a list of the best texts. And as before, we can refine this list of texts. And as before, in just two or three seconds more, we can extract the keywords and we can limit our searches to the virtual corpus that we've created. An extremely powerful feature in the COCA corpus is the ability to analyze our own text. For example, a student who wants to improve reading comprehension might copy and paste text from a newspaper article from the web. In the example shown here, this is an article from CNN dealing with the shortage of infant formula in the United States. Once we insert the text and click Submit, we see the keywords from the text. We can click on any of the keywords to see the full home page for that word, as we've discussed previously. And we can do that for any word in the text as well. Another powerful feature is that we can select any phrase in the corpus, such as powdered milk, and then expand the search, for example, powdered followed by a noun, to find related phrases in COCA. Another feature of the corpora is the ability to see external resources for words and phrases in the results from our corpus searches. For example, by default, we will see the keyword in context view for a given word or phrase. But we can also see translations of any of these words, which is something that we will discuss in more detail in just a bit. We can also do a Google search for the word or phrase, or find images, or see videos with a pronunciation of the highlighted word or phrase, or search for the word or phrase in Google Books. Likewise, users can easily find external resources for the results in the keyword in context or concordance display. 
by default, users see an expanded uh, keyword in context display up to about 200 words, but they can also click on an icon to see a translation for the line of text. They can click on another icon to hear the line pronounced. And finally, they can click to see information on any of the other words in the line, including a corpus search, definitions, external images, and videos, pronunciation, and translations for any of these words. One of the challenges for learners in using keyword and context lines is that there are often many other words in the line which they don't understand. But with these tools, learners no longer need to be afraid of concordance lines. And this functionality is only available at EnglishCorpora.org. As mentioned, users can easily see translations of words or phrases or concordance lines. And these translations are made available via Google Translate for more than 100 languages. These translations are, are kind of like using training wheels as users learn English. From the frequency list, they can see the translation for a specific word or phrase, or all of the words or phrases on the page. From the keyword in context or concordance display, they can see the translation of a given line of text or multiple lines of text, which they've selected. Finally, from the expanded context page, they can see a translation of the entire expanded context. There are many, many other tools that are built into the Corpus interface, but we will only discuss three of these at this point. First, you can see a list of all of your searches, and you can even search through your searches and add notes about any of the searches. For example, all searches that you've done on a particular topic. And you can copy a link to the search and insert it into a research paper or an email or wherever so that others can see exactly what you saw when you did the search. Second, you can save words and phrases to a favorites list and you can assign them to categories such as biology or synonyms of walk or whatever. This should be especially useful for language learners and teachers. Finally, you can save keyword and context lines to lists and then edit these lists in many different ways. In summary, the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org are the most widely used corpora in the world, both for language teaching and for research. There's also offline data, for example, word frequency data and downloadable full text corpora that have been used by many hundreds of companies and universities throughout the world. <clears throat> the corpora are much larger and much faster than comparable corpora. For example, for research on dialects and historical change, they're about 100 times as big as the next largest corpora. There's an incredibly large and wide range of searches. There's powerful browsing of the top 60,000 words in the corpora and detailed word sketches for each of these words, definitions, collocates, topics, synonyms, clusters, concordance lines, external links, and much more. There is much better data on linguistic variation in English, historical, dialectal, and genre-based than can be found with any other corpora. There's also a very wide range of tools, virtual corpora, the ability to analyze entire text, to save data, and to see links to external data. An important point is that probably 90% or more of the searches that you've seen in this video wouldn't be possible or doable anywhere else.
They're only possible with the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org. So in summary, the data from these corpora allow non-native speakers to better model their usage on actual English usage, such as in the simple example that we gave at the beginning with seldom. And finally, in summary, the corpora from EnglishCorpora.org are the most powerful and the most user-friendly corpora of English for teaching, learning, and research.